I think with generative AI, that's a whole different ballgame because these models were created by data that was essentially hoovered up from the internet. And we don't really know what's in these things with, with, with billions and billions of parameters. So I think there is a, a bit of a risk uh, to organizations in understanding, you know, we don't really know how these, the data that was used to build uh, many of the large language models that are out there. We don't. I like that. Hoovered up. I get that. Um, Adrian, you wanted to talk about this topic, so I'm going to give you the floor here on it. Data privacy and security. Yeah. I, many, many ages ago, I was a global security architect. And so I started as a hacker, believe it or not, in the 90s and separate uh, conversation over a beer. But uh, I'll, <laughs> TFTP Etsy password was the extent of my hiding capabilities. And it worked for the most part. So if, if you got gray hairs, you remember that. Um, so here's, here's, I think the challenge today with AI and data privacy and security, it's, we have to worry about all the things we always worried about before, but I think now more than ever, transparency and explainability is, is front and center. And so when you look at an AI solution, um, a large machine learning solution, for example, you're, you need the need to, right? Not just, I want to, the need to, to be compliant, to be able to explain where the data came from, what I did with the data. That's the first part. And then you have to explain what the engine actually did with the data, especially if you're dealing with PII information, that's really hard. So security, privacy, governance, I think that's the next big challenge is really delivering that explainability. From a data perspective, if I've got data pipelines all over the place and I'm moving and massaging and transforming data all over the place, mm -hmm. it makes that job a little bit harder. Um, so I think that that's a big challenge that all of us are really trying to really get our arms around today. I'd say, I'd say. Now, Sue, um, at IBM with the fast portfolio of products, you must have a pretty heavy privacy and security overlay for to manage all that. I couldn't hear you, uh, William. Do that please? Well, just what is a, uh, what about it, uh, data privacy and security at IBM with all those products that you have? Uh, <laughs> we have so many thousands and thousands of products. I think the basics of what Adrian and, uh, and David just said, hold true. Um, I think one of the things for, well, a key product, as you guys well know, not that I'm making, making a plug for anything, but you know, what's next, which is basically you have all your LLMs all in one place. You can just figure out what kind of modding you want to build, play in the sandbox. You've got your analytics there. You've got your data connectors there. I think your question around privacy and security, I love what Adrian said around explainability. It, explainability also is contingent on, I think what David perhaps earlier said around what, or maybe it was Sanjay who said, you know, what kinds of data are you going to be looking at and why is that relevant? So before we even go so in the privacy security, I could, you could, if you could even take any one vertical, there are a couple of components that I would like to add. One is that any updates, especially in heavily regulated industries, which I mentioned before, you have to be very, very cautious, especially if you're looking at large volumes of data, but you have excluded certain types of members in, in, in when you were training that data. And what I mean by that, in those updates, there are new entrants, new standards, new, um, so to speak, clients that may be included. Is your model compliant to that? Let's. It's not just updating a policy. It's much more than that, right? So... And that's both at the national level as well as a global level if you're a global company. I think that's one of the things that I know that IBM, we, we take a look at very carefully. The second thing is I purposely mentioned uh, what's next because what's the next, it, it basically you can think of it as a marketplace where you've got all these different LLMs, you have your data connectors, you figure out what your queries are. So a lot of it is contingent on the client using it, right? To figure out what that means. It also helps in what I call self-service analytics or whatever, getting to know more and more about AI. So when it comes to data privacy there, I'm not quite sure that, and can I say this, that we've sorted all those other components that I mentioned around updating because these LLNs were trained for, you know, whatever, for, for us uh, um, uh, uh, at a period of time. As you're updating, as your people always say, well, are you in compliance? So we are not talking about compliance. We're talking about maybe additional deletion. We're talking about then retraining. 
you can have flexible architectures, which, you, which we all have. We have open source data. We have a lot of things. But I'm not quite sure whether we're meeting the standards that we need to meet enterprise-wide as well as vertical-wise, especially in those where privacy and security matter a little bit more. Um, and there are heavy penalties attached. Great. Thank you, Sue. Um, now, Nick, at Dremio, one of your one of the big themes is for your data lake house is to give direct access on everyone to all data. So how do you balance that with privacy and security requirements? Yeah, there's a there's a dirty thing here that I think most of us will probably uh, laugh or not, but not our heads to um, is most organizations don't have full spectrum visibility of all of their data. They just don't, right? Like when I was at Zendesk, we had our 250 SaaS applications powering Zendesk. How do you maintain governance of all of those different mm -hmm. you know, platforms, let alone each of those has the ability to combine data, enrich data, serve data, and so forth across the ecosystem. So there's uh, one thing I love that I learned from Michelin um, is this phrase of like discipline at the core, flexibility at the edge. Um, so one of the things, especially with Dremio, that I have always push folks is, hey, look, if, if you can have or effectively event or pub sub or automatically, in the case of everything you do inside Dremio, everything is tracked in terms of every event with the data asset and the usage or access to that asset, what you can start working backwards is that full spectrum visibility of usage, mm -hmm. right? So now it's a matter of thinking about and managing the risk within your enterprise and that balance between innovation, access, over privilegement, right? And it, it's definitely more art than it is science. Uh, and I think especially as we even talk about these AI tools, right? AI tools and platforms utilizing them and those the patterns, they don't think about things like sec DevOps, right? They don't think about things like reusability and multi-layered attribution, right? So I think it's, it's more of policy never is at the rate of innovation. Uh, we can't wait for policy to catch up to innovation. <laughs> what we can do is go, can I actually have spectrum visibility of everything that's happening inside? Whether I can govern them or all, we're all catching up. Maintaining that spectrum of ability, visibility is always critical. I think interestingly, transparency is the key like to everything, including more so. I think the need is more now. So just as an example, like uh, one of the customers we are working with, when the system said, you know, this person is using a lot more data, the norm, right? Out of the box. Mm. The problem was the what they said was that, well, that's not the problem that they're using too much data. The problem is they shouldn't have uh, been on the system in the first place, right? And they immediately removed it. So when I look at AI, like, and, and the use of more data there, I think the word key word I'm looking for is more responsible. And a lot of this has to come from the platform itself. And just to give a context, like, I mean, it's to me, it's just acceptance. Like every organization will be using now generative AI models, right? That's really, uh, it's, it's just a, it's a disruptor, right? It will happen. And the question is, how can technology help there more so? And the things which I fully expect, you know, out of this is uh, any tech stack coming out who is using this, whether it's prompt engineering, whether it's all the way going into fine tuning, is that the data virtues is getting used. It is <coughs> used in a way where it makes sense, which, which is around, you know, does it do the right anonymization? Does it do it out of the box? And that's really the key to that. So now hopefully, you know, with this, like I'm, this where I'm hoping, you know, that this data itself teaches and that's where the AI comes into picture telling, you know, how I should be used in the best possible way, ethical way, whichever way we look at it. <laughs>